In one of my previous videos, we saw about fine tuning the GPT OSS model. Some of you messaged me on LinkedIn and said that coding for model training or even fine tuning is a bit overwhelming. And that was when I found Transformer Lab. Transformer Lab is a completely open source platform for training advanced AI models. So we don't really have to write any code. We can simply start and interact with any foundation model and we can also train them just through the platform without writing a single line of code. So in this video, let's deep dive into Transformer Lab. Particularly, we'll see how to run a simple foundation model for inference and more importantly we'll see how we can fine-tune any given foundation model we will take the llama 2.3 1 billion instec as an example we will fine-tune it without writing a single line of code we will fine-tune on the databricks dolly 15k data set and we will compare the fine-tune model with that of the foundation model and see how it compares against the foundation model so let's get started so how we are going to go about this installation is that we are going to install Transformer Lab in Mac as a client and from the client we are going to connect to a Linux machine which is going to be the server and this server has got Ubuntu 22.04 running and we're going to be having a H100 GPU in that in order to help us with the training so let's crack on with this installation but to get started we can go to Transformer Lab dot ai and if we click on download we have the client either for mac or windows if i have a mac machine so i'm going to click on download for mac and we have the dmg file that gets downloaded we can install like any other dmg file on the mac machine so once we are done with the installation on the mac machine we can see that there are two tabs available one is the local engine where we can actually run everything locally and we've got connect to remote engine so we're going to use this option we're going to provide the server URL and we're going to provide the port in which the transformer lab is running. Let's go ahead with the server installation now. They've given the instructions as to how we can go about installing the transformer lab on the remote computer. So if we click on that, we can see that we just have to run this one command on the server in order to get everything sorted. So let me first SSH into the machine, SSH Ubuntu at the IP address. And if I do a LS and we just have to run this command in order to install transformer lab takes care of installing conda and so on all the virtual environment and packages inside that it has finished installing everything the next step is to cd into the src directory and just run it we can see that everything has now started and it's available in this ip address over to the transformer lab that's running locally i'm just going to give the server address and the port is already there i'm just going to click on submit in order to get connected we are now connected on all set so if you go under foundation there are no foundation models at the moment so i'm going to go to the model store and over here there are a bunch of models that are available for us to play around with i'm going to narrow down to llama models if i sort by size i'm just going to pick up a model that's of reasonable size we have the llama 3.2 1 billion instep i'm just going to download that so that model is now downloaded and if i go under foundation again we can see that the model is available i can click on select and that model is ready to play around with but if we go under interact we're still not able to interact with this model the reason being that we don't have the right plugin so plugins are tools that we can use to say load some models in order to run them or we can use the trainer plugin in order to do some training for example we can do LoRa trainer for fine tuning or we can use the diffusion LoRa if you're fine tuning a diffusion model and we have got quite a few options there you can do supervised fine tuning and we also have the evaluator plugins if you want to do some evaluation on some data sets and we also have some exporter plugins if you want to export the current model to ggf format or if you want to export to a different format we have a llama file exporter and lastly we also have rack plugins which enable us to build rack pipelines for the loader model i'm just going to use this fast chat server so if i click on install that plugin will be installed on the server i can now go to foundation and we now have the run button so if i click on the run button that model will start on the server and will be ready for us to play around with we need to set the hugging face api key for that we go under the settings we need to give hugging face credentials because we are pulling the model from hugging face in order to run in our server it's better to have the access token here it's also better to log things 
and if you are using weights and bias for that better to give the weights and biases api key so now that i have given the hugging face api key log into hugging face successful now if i go to foundation and click on run so the model is running fine now if we click on interact we can just say hey there and we can get a response from the llm that's running so that's absolutely fine so with the model downloaded we now need to think about the data set for the data set we have a separate data set set so if we go under data sets we don't have any local data sets currently we go to data set store which is this tab we can find quite a few data sets under that i'm going to choose databricks dolly 15k so if i click on download we will get access to this data set and we can use this data set for our fine tuning we can see that already the data set is downloaded as i speak so if we go on the train we don't have anything there we don't have any training templates we don't have any jobs running in the training queue but on the top right we have got a new and under that again we can see we don't have any training plugins again we go back to the plugin and under plugins we have the trainer plugins the one that i'm interested in is the llm lora trainer because we're going to do a lora fine tuning i'm going to click on install and we have the lora trainer installed as a plugin now if i go to train i click on new we can see that the plugin is available there and under that by default we have a name generated for the training template and if i go on the data set we can see the data set that we have downloaded let's say if i choose that data set it gives a preview of what's there in the training set or the test set if it's available and if i go on the data template this is what are the fields that are available in the data set for example we have the instruction context response and category and if we scroll down it shows a preview of what's there and what the model sees so this is what the model sees for example currently it just says instruction summary the following instructions summarize the following so but we need to tweak this in order to make it suitable for our data set our data set has instruction context response and a category so in our data set we have got this four fields which is instruction context response and category what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the instruction and the response and i'm going to ignore the category and context and i'm going to follow this formatting template which is that prompt and generation so i'm going to remove this one and i'm going to use the instruction for the prompt so for the prompt i'm just going to give the instruction and for the generation i'm just going to use the response so this is how the rendered output is going to look for example when the prompt is when did virgin australia start operating the generation is virgin australia commenced service on 31st august 20 2000 as virgin blue with two aircraft on a single route so the data template is now sorted and if we go to plugin config we can see that the batch size is four and we've got the number of training epochs probably i will set that to five and when i set the max steps we can leave the max steps as minus one see this is the lora r we can reduce it if your gpu is small or if you want a smaller train model but i'm going to leave it at 16 and i'm not going to change any of the parameters and i'm not even going to lock to weights and biases i'm not going to fuse the adapter basically i'm going to have a separate adapter to that of the foundation model and i'm going to save the training template right it needs a name so i'm just going to say AI ai bytes adapter one and i'm going to save training template i'm just going to click on queue and that should queue the model for training we can see that the training has already started and if i now click on output we can see the server logs as to what's going on in the server and we can even find this nice tensor board button so if i click on that we can see that it's running it started and we can see this job that i just started and we can see this nice graphs what i will be interested in is the training loss which has already started going down i can probably maximize that so i will keep an eye on this training loss and see how the training progresses or i can close it and come here and wait for the run to progress so while the training is progressing we can even stop it by clicking on this small red button if we think that some of the parameters are have been set wrongly you can even click on edit 
you can go to plugin config you can change the parameters that you want to change we even have the sweep config option where we can choose a config for example the lora r or the training epochs and we can give say two epochs five epochs and ten epochs and then see how the training goes for each of those so i'm going to cancel out of it because the training is still running now if you want to find out how far we have progressed we can see that we are around 68 percent and it says here 68 percent we can even go to the tensor board again look at how the training loss looks the training loss is exponentially decreasing which is a good sign always and we, we can notice that the mean token accuracy is gradually increasing kind of saturating here but we are almost 60 percent through the training so this is absolutely fine i'm gonna come out of it and i'm gonna wait for the training to complete so after a while we can notice that the job completed successfully we can see the success message which says job completed successfully and we can also look into the tensor board for the final result of the training we can see that the training loss has decreased quite nicely indicating that the training has converged so we can close out of it we can now do inference on this train model so if you go to foundation we can stop whatever is running we can eject the model go down to foundation again we can see that there's a llama 3.2b in stuck that's the foundation model we click on select and under that we go inside adapters we can see the adapter that we've just trained we click on select again we can see the adapter is shown here which means that this adapter is used by the foundation model which is llama 3.21 billion in stock we can now click on run and the foundation model is going to use the adapter for its run so we can now go to interact and we can start a new conversation and ask any questions before that we can go to data set and get a data sample let's take this data sample which says identify which instrument is string or percussion and the instruments are Kantaro and Gudoc. The answer is that Gudoc is string and Kantaro is percussion. So let's run this through the fine tune model and see how that goes. So I'm going to close that and go to interact and ask the question. So I've come to the chat and I've created a new conversation and I've asked identify which instrument is string or percussion. And I'm getting the answer that Kantaro is a percussion instrument and Gudoc is a string instrument. So that's the train model just to see what happens if we actually remove the adapter i'm going to go to the foundation stop and eject the model and once again i'm going to select the model and i'm not going to include any adapter here i'm just going to run the foundation model let's go and ask the same question so now that it started i'm going to go into interact i'm going to close that make sure it's a new conversation and i'm just going to say identify which instrument is string or percussion i'm going to ask that and it's it gives a standard thank you for bringing this question to my attention to answer your question and taro is a string instrument it is a lute like instrument with a long neck and a rounded back the the gyudok is a drum which is a percussion instrument it has a distinctively loud and resonant sound so it's basically flipped the answer Kantaro is a percussion and gyudok is a string instrument but it got the answer wrong for both of them so that's the power of fine tuning on top of training without writing code the tool also offers uh, other features like workflows for example you can create a workflow and let's say it's a test workflow and you can you know you have a start node and then you can add a few other nodes you click on add node we can see that we can have train eval and generate or export nodes and you can sort of build a pipeline and we can have a start node and you can keep building one after the other and you can click on run and can you can see that different steps executing one after the other and you also have other plugins like for example you can use a evaluator plugin in order to run evaluations on the standard data sets you can even build a rag pipeline using this plugin so that is all that i wanted to talk about today with a tool like transformer lab you don't really have to write any code in order to run the training which seems to be intimidating for some of you guys i hope that was useful if you want to try transformer lab i've given the link in the description do give it a try and i will see you in my next video until then take care